guys, I'm Laurie Vitali. On this episode of Laurie in the Kitchen, I want to share with you my crock pot meatballs. Now, it's nothing extraordinary, but I know from reading a lot of your comments and your Twitter messages and your Instagram comments, um, you guys love when I share with you like sort of like home recipes, just really easy things that you can do for a big crowd. And I figured this was the perfect time to share this recipe with you because there's a lot of going on this time of year. There's a lot of impromptu get-togethers, and if you or anything like me, casual entertaining is what it's all about. So if you're gonna do a buffet, having a you know a crock pot of these in the background just simmering away all day is so good. Serve them in some nice hoagie rolls, or you can serve these over pasta if you want to. They get the job done, and they're really really easy. It's almost like um chicken cacciatore sauce mixed with meatballs. Really really delicious, but really easy. You're gonna start with the ingredients for the meatballs, of course. What I have here, I'm making a big batch today, so I've got lots of ground beef. I like to use 93% lean, 7% fat. This is some fresh breadcrumbs. I just took some sliced, just white sandwich bread, and I just pulsed it until I got breadcrumbs out of it. But you can use any leftover bread you have. If it's got really thick crust, remove it. Small onion and a couple of cloves of garlic. Couple of eggs. I've got some fennel seeds here. Salt and pepper, and this is my homemade Italian seasoning blend. You can use any Italian seasoning you want, but if you have my book, um, then you know my recipe for it. I always like to have big containers of it on hand because it's fabulous. Okay, let's get started. The very first thing I want to do is uh, pulse my garlic, my onion, and my to um, toasted, my fennel seeds. You don't have to use fennel seeds, but this is almost like an homage to sausage because sometimes I like to put sausage in my meatballs, but I don't always have it on hand. So if I add a little bit of fennel seeds to it, it gives you that like flavor that sausage would. Do you know what I mean? But you don't have to use it if you don't want to. But I'm gonna use, I'm gonna add all three things to my little mini chop. And I am just going to pulse these until everything is really nice and finely chopped up. Kind of like a puree. That's what I want. I want it to be almost like pureed. Okay. If you need to add like a tablespoon of water to get it to this point, by all means, go ahead. I find that different mini choppers or different food processors um, will sometimes give you a different outcome when it comes to wanting something really, really smooth. But that is exactly what I want. Now, I'm not adding any milk or anything to this because first of all, I'm using fresh breadcrumbs. Second of all, I pureed that onion so this is really wet. And third of all, I don't want these to be too wet because I need to, you know, hold together in the slow cooker. Now it's really simple. Now I'm just going to just add everything in. I want a good grinding or two of pepper, a nice healthy pinch of salt. There's a lot of beef there. So, and then I want a good pinch of my homemade three pinches. Italian seasoning my eggs. I have to add everything in before I start touching it so that I don't get anything messed up. And my beef. And my beef. And my breadcrumbs to my beef. And now I'm just going to, oh, you know what I forgot? It's really important. I'm so embarrassed. But this goes to show that even die-hard Parmigiano Reggiano fans have their loose moments. I'm gonna grab my, I'm gonna wash my hand, grab my Parmigiano, and come back here to add a really healthy amount to this to apologize to it for forgetting it. <laughs> okay, I can live again. Whew, I didn't feel like myself there for a second. I was just starting to wonder who I was. Okay, clean hands, going back in. Roughly about a half a cup of store of parm, but really, if you ever need to measure parm, something is not right. All right, I'm just gonna mix this until it's really, really well mixed, and then we'll form them. This is well mixed. Now, you can make them as small or as big as you want. My only thing is, make sure that you pick a size and you stick to it, because you want them to all um, cook evenly. So I'm gonna use a regular ice cream scoop, because I want these to be pretty hearty meatballs. I'm not gonna fill the whole ice cream scoop, because otherwise they'd be really, really big. And then just, Probably like the size of a golf ball, but you can make them smaller if you're doing a cocktail party, you know? So really it's up to you. I'm gonna continue to form all of these and then we'll get them cooking. These babies are rolled. Now what I've got here is my crock pot. I don't even know, what is the, this is, anyway. A layer of olive oil on the bottom. You don't want anything to stick. You, if you want to, you can sear them. But that kind of defeats the purpose of doing a crock pot meal, you see. And I also don't feel like it's necessary at this point. Trust me, it really isn't. I know it sounds crazy, but it works out really well. 
Now I'm just going to make a layer of these, a couple layers really. At the bottom, a little bit of olive oil under there. This is going to be so phenomenal and so fantastic. And everything that you have put in those meatballs will, when you put the sauce in, which is not going to happen yet, it will just sort of mingle throughout the sauce and the flavor goes all over the place and it's just really, really good. So I am just going to pop these on and I'm going to put them on high for two hours. You can put them on slow, but I like to put them on high for two hours. So that's what I'm going to go do now. Wash my hands, turn this on to high and show you what it looks like when it's there and then we'll add the sauce. Okay, my meatballs look good. They had two hours on high. Don't mix them yet because the, there's some in there that are not fully cooked yet, so they're not holding their shape. You don't want to mess them up. Now what we're going to do is put everything else in. Really easy, really simple. Tomato puree. Get that going in there, okay? All right, now I've got some crushed tomatoes. This has got basil in it already. Excellent. A little bit of red wine. Don't want to put red wine? By all means, leave it out. But I like it. Then I've got bell peppers, garlic, mushrooms, and onions. Add that all in there. Trust me, it is going to work out better than okay. A healthy pinch of my Italian seasoning blend. My Italian seasoning blend doesn't have salt in it, so I can put as much as I want without fearing that my food's going to be too salty. Salt and pepper. And a few leaves of fresh basil. I like to tear it in half and then add more at the very end for some freshness. Now, try to, you're not going to be successful at the, at the beginning because you don't want to stir everything up. You don't want to disturb those meatballs just yet. Just sort of do what I'm doing right now, which is kind of just mushing them around like that, put the lid back on, and put it back in for two and a half hours on high, two and a half to three hours on high, or about four to five hours on low. So, I'm gonna get these going, and I'll show you what they look like when they're done. Ah, oh, it's heavy. Look at this, I mean, just look, okay? Fantastic. Once I put the sauce in, I let this go for about two hours and 45 minutes. Smells outrageous. In an hour after you add the sauce, you can start giving them a stir because at that point the meatballs will be uh, pretty pretty firm, and everything will have warmed up, so it's easier to mix things around. Oh, they smell so good. Adjust the seasoning to taste. A little salt, a little pepper, whatever you want. Some uh, additional fresh basil. You can serve these in a hoagie roll. You can serve these over pasta. You can serve this over polenta, you can serve it over rice, you can serve it over whatever your heart desires. If you don't want as much sauce, by all means just use the tomato sauce, don't use the crushed tomatoes as well. But for me, let the meatballs all go, but you'll have leftover sauce to put in the freezer. To me, that's extremely valuable. I love having sauces in the freezer. Um, doesn't have to have the meatballs in it. Once the meatballs are gone and there's still leftover sauce, I mean, I live for that. Think about it. On a weeknight, you're never more than 10 minutes away from throwing out some sauce in a small saucepan and boiling some pasta. I mean, that's what everybody wants, right? Your meatball is really nice and firm. Smells outrageous. It smells like a mixture of sausage and chicken cacciatore, all in one. I'm gonna have a little, that sauce is really lovely and rich. You can really smell the fennel. I didn't put very much in there, I only had a quarter teaspoon, but it's definitely giving me the right sort of scent. Mm. Hot, mmm, very hot. Mmm, mmm. That is phenomenal. That sauce, I just want to eat it with a spoon. Spoon that over pasta, over rice, over mashed potatoes even. I know it sounds crazy, but it works. Over polenta. Amazing. A big thing of that, keep it on warm the entire night and people can make sandwiches as sandwiches. <laughs> That's how I learned to say sandwiches when I first learned English. Don't judge. <laughs> um, put it on low as people come through the door, make themselves, you know, sandwiches, 
you, you can't lose. Go to lauraeleanthekitchen.com for the written recipe. Let me know what other crock pot meals or dishes you'd like to see next, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.